Um, hello? <laughs> um, okay, can you please tell me your name, which cohort you're involved with, and what delivery method you received the COTEL studies? Uh, my name is Clint Hamada, and I am on the online 2012-2013 cohort. Thank you. And um, do you also teach COTEL? I am, yes, I'm sort of assisting to facilitate some of the online cohorts as well. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Um, what intrigued you about taking COTEL courses in the first place? Uh, what I'm really interested in is in my job. I'm a, a technology facilitator at a one-to-one -one school. Um, interested in partly, you know, what's the up-and-coming research, and I know in a lot of the discussion, and that's what COTEL really focuses on, is what is the up-to-date uh, discussions going on around the themes of the different courses. Um, and also in my position I thought it was just really important that I have some sort of certification going, yes, I know educational technology. Not only do I have it as a job title, but I have it with the certification as well. Fantastic. Um, what, uh, I think you kind of already answered this, but what were you looking to get out of the courses in particular? Um, one of the main things was just the, the, the certification behind the, the title, but also I, I enjoy kind of the networked aspect of it. I like how it is delivered. I like um, the blogging aspect, the RSS aspect, the, the reading of other people's work, the, the community feel to it. It's something that I do already, um, and I thought that it was a great way to deliver a course. How important were the 15 graduate credits to um, you taking the courses? Initially, I thought they were going to be really important because I thought that I would leverage that into a master's degree. Um, since then, I've decided not to take my take the the SUNY path to a master's. I'm doing a, a different master's, um, and so not really that important. I think more it's the the qualification of Cotel rather than the 15 graduate credits that are important to me. And what do you like about the current design structure of the online model? Oh, I think it's relevant. I think it's timely. I think it's. Uh, it's allowing us to build a base for the future as well, so it's not just I'm done with the course and I don't need to think about it. Through the course I'm making connections and through the course I am actually furthering my own network and furthering who I know and what I know and where I can go for future reference. Um, did your instructors use any um, particular online strategies that you think were really effective? To me, I think the this, this idea of... Uh, connectivism and being connected to other individuals and knowing who to go or where to go to find the information or to have the discussions that I want. Um, I think that's probably the, the single most uh, important strategy that's being used. Uh, we employ a lot of videos, you know, here's how you do this, especially if it's something that's very tech specific, here's how you subscribe to a blog, here's how you create your blog, for example, um, and from a reference point of view that's really useful. Um, do you feel you needed any prerequisite knowledge in tech or pedagogy to take the classes? I don't think I needed it, and I know a lot of people who didn't have it, but having that knowledge already certainly made it a heck of a lot easier. And um, can you tell me about the availability of your instructor? Do you feel as if it was easy, since you weren't face-to-face, -to, -face, to be able to contact them, email them, and get feedback? I think because... Jeff is facilitating all of these and this is what his main focus is at the moment, it's quite easy. Um, I think you know, one of the things that's really important for any class at any level is timely feedback and I can see how that can sometimes be an issue um, and finding ways, and that's the feedback that I get in my facilitation role is how do we keep this feedback coming, but because of the structure and you can go at your own pace and if you don't keep up then you know, you have time at the end to make up, and I think that's great for teaching and trying to do this full time. But it then also makes it a little bit difficult sometimes on the facilitator to be able to give you that timely feedback. I mean, a lot of times it's, I'm going to do four blog posts in a night. Mm -hmm. um, that's not really how it's designed, that's just sort of how it plays out in practice. And that, I think that takes away from some of the effectiveness at times, um, but you know, we're all working full time as well as taking this course, so it's to be to be understood. Yeah. Um were the assessments appropriate? Um what I like about the assessments is they're very much practical to you in your situation at school. 
So in that respect, I think you get a lot of buy-in and people put a lot of time and effort, I hope, into the assessment and you get exactly what you put into it. Um, I could see in my, in my previous times as a devious student, I could see how you could probably look up and go, ah, oh, I can cut this corner, cut that corner, and, you know, and then I can still get, get my, you know, my stamp and say, yes, I've done that. Um, from a professional point of view, or from a learner point of view, I don't think, I, I see there's no benefit in doing that. Um, so, I think they're appropriate in that they give me an opportunity to, to test the skills or to, to put into practice the skills and the concepts that we're talking about. Um, the accountability sometimes I think can be gamed a little bit, but one would hope that the, the professionals and, and the, the learners wouldn't want to do that for their own sake. Um, do you feel as if the course objectives were measurable? The course objectives are very much uh, the net standards for teachers. Um, measurable in that they've been addressed, yes. Measurable in that you know, you've know you done it to a high degree of competency. Um, I think that's a little bit harder, but again, I think that's an issue with how the net standards in general are for teachers and students and administrators. Um, it's It's easy to address them. It's hard sometimes to really measure them, I would think. Um, was the course grading policy clearly stated? That's, yeah, it was quite clear. Um, and it's always linked, and it's always, you know, you can always go back to the rubric. Um, and I think if you have any questions about the rubric, you know, there are always people there who can answer those. What I also like is it's very transparent in that I might be doing course two, and I'm working on my final project. I can go back and search and look at anybody's course two and read the feedback that anybody's course two has gotten. Um, so I can... I get the transparency and I can see what those the course grading policy is mm -hmm. either through the rubric or through practice. And last question, uh, did you have multiple opportunities to measure your learning? For me to personally measure, again I, I can measure my learning through my own reflective practice so in that respect yes. Is it measurable in that I can assign a numeric value you know, how some might traditionally think uh, measurable, no. Um, but I think because of the portfolio aspect of the assessment and of the course, you measure that growth over time, and that's pretty readily apparent when you look back uh, from somebody, course one, and the quality of the work and what they're doing and how comfortable they seem through to course five, and then looking at the growth that they've, they've shown in that medium, uh, that's, that's very easily measurable, in my opinion. Awesome. Can I ask you one last question? Of course. How important do you think it is for the instructor who's teaching the course to have been through the COTEL program? Um, I would say it's pretty important. Pretty important. Um, I think more than anything, just so that you know what the expectations are. Um, in terms of the content, I don't think it's that important, but I think in terms of knowing what the expectations are and how the course is run. Um, I think that's, so from more of a logistical point of view rather than a content point of view, because I think if you're, if you're in the technology integration ed tech field and you are well versed and you're up to date, I mean that's what it's all about is being up to date. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the expectations and, and how everything's put together, I mean it's always useful to have that run through. Um, so maybe I don't know if you necessarily need to have a COTEL certificate in order to teach it, but to have gone through the process, I think that's pretty important. I agree. Thank you. Pleasure.